and uh, 10 minutes to the top of the hour. This is still Good Morning Kenya. Time for our second conversation this Wednesday. And you know if it's Wednesday, it's definitely matters and lifestyle. On set, I'm joined by Dennis Osadibi. I did it correctly? Yes. <laughs> yes Dennis Osadibi. Uh-huh. Who's a fashion designer and the founder of D&D &D Clothing. We'll be talking about the fashion space and specifically how COVID-19 has affected this kind of industry. We definitely know that COVID-19 has affected different industry. Key among them, there's entertainment, hotel, um, as well as tourism, which form the bigger part of what has been affected by COVID-19. But how about the fashion space? That is our conversation this morning. Dennis, before you go to the whole aspect of COVID-19, how about you begin from the basics? You describe yourself as a fashion designer, stroke an entertainment enthusiast. Is it so? Yes. How do these two come about? I mean, fashion, entertainment? Yeah, actually, I started uh, from Nigeria. Uh, I was making movies. I have my own uh, entertainment company. It is called DCS Entertainment. So from there, we uh, start uh, making uh, different kind of costume and uh, you know, the idea of you making something that is beyond just Western style came up and that is exactly where we started from. Mm -hmm. So it was off just from what you were witnessing while you were making movies? Yes. So then do you still make movies or is you just went to fashion altogether? My last movie that I did was I think 2011. Mm. That was my last movie before I moved to Europe. So what I did was I went there to make a feasibility study. Yeah and uh, understand the basic of why in Africa, you know, people look at us like only when um, they see Ankara or Ketenge, they mm. think that is the only thing that we can be able to afford. Yeah, and I think an that African. is the only thing that is our style. Yeah, but you see, we are trying now to see also, let them look at Africa making suit, for example. Look at Africa making silk kind of shirt. Look at Africa making something that is beyond what they just think. Mm -hmm. Yes, like in China or in Japan, you see they have their own uniform, yeah? Mm -hmm. People recognize them with exactly what they do. Mm -hmm. But you see, they are the same people who make suits, shirts, and different kind of things that we wear back here in Africa. Mm -hmm. So what we do is to change also that mindset, that perspective of people thinking is only Ankara or Ketenge or or uh, what do we call it, or wooden of Ghana that yeah. only uh, Africa can be able to afford. So that is why we decide to form something apart from just Ankara. So we create Ankara in a Western way, kind of. Mm -hmm. So if now we are now turning Ankara into silk. We're using it into lining for suit. We're using Ankara to make something different. We're using Ketenge to make even jeans. So we're changing that mindset of you believing that it's only about uh, when you see, uh, what you call it, when you see uh, like a tenge, that is only for Africa. Mm -hmm. So that is exactly what we, we, we change before we move to Dubai. All right, and that's a beautiful um, perspective because just the way you're mentioning, there's that mindset, just thinking that this is the only thing that perhaps Africa can make, yet you have so much potential to do even much more. All right, so when D&D &D uh, clothing was bad, this was in, is it 2016? 20, we started 2015 in Dubai. In, in 2015 yes, in, Dubai. in Dubai. So 2016 we were able to reach all part of Dubai. And uh, from end of 2016, so a lot of clients were coming, okay, uh, if you can do this kind of creative design, can you make me suit, for example? Oh. Can you make me jacket, for example? Yeah. Can you make me wedding gown? And we started doing different custom made for different nationalities in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And we now think about how can we now turn this, our custom made to a brand? Mm -hmm. So 2017, we now form D&D clothing and we start printing our own fabric. We start turning our Kara fabric into Western wear and it, it went viral in Dubai. All right, so definitely you can clearly say that the progress has been good so far. Has it? Yes, because in Dubai we are the first uh, to number one registered uh, African fashion in the system, and uh, we also are the one that is recognizing UAE as the brand that is recognizing Africa into something that is very great. Yeah. And apart from that, the government of Dubai as well recognizes us as a company who is doing very great in UAE. 
Yeah, which is a good thing. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to ask you how it makes you feel because I know it's a good kind of feeling, you know, just being an African country, being reco uh, an African rather, being recognized in the UAE. But all together, from, you, from your perspective as a fashion designer, what does this make you feel about African designs being recognized even beyond the African continent? Yes, when we did uh, 2019, when we do uh, is a uh, Call World Fashion Award, and yeah. we participated into so many uh, design with uh, different uh, country, America, the European, and uh, and we came out third. Italian came out first, and uh, I know because we're the first time. You know, when it comes to Africa, people think that oh, there is less they can give. You understand, but we did our best, and at the same time, we came out. Uh, that also motivated us to say, "Okay, if we can be able to do this, let's go back to our mother's land, which is Africa. Mm. Set off a big, set off a factory where we can be able to, at least, we can speak the same language, mm. so we can share to the world what we uh, have. So that is what even motivated us to come to Kenya to establish our first African uh, location. Mm -hmm. So at yes. least it makes you feel that for true, you know, what we make as Africans can also be appreciated beyond. Yes. Now, when you talk about that competition, mm. you won, uh, an, is it third place, I believe? Yes, we won. And uh, again, being the first African also. Yes. Okay. We won third place, and uh, for Barbie doll, we won second place. Mm -hmm. And uh, this gives us the motivation to see that, okay, if you can be able to do that, that means you can excel into the world. Mm -hmm. And from that time, we decide to say, okay, it's not just limited to custom made. Now we want to share as a brand to the whole world. Mm. And from after that, we start having representative like in the US, we start having representative in Paris, we, has, uh, we start having representative in London, and uh, slow, and this is where we are now. Mm -hmm. This kind of, uh, I mean, the winning, it's again, definitely a good experience. It's definitely ma made you feel good as a fashion designer, but how did this entire experience just shift your mind as a fashion designer, even in terms of what now you create and what you might want to create even moving forward? Well, the experience makes us believe that there is nothing in your mind that uh, if you really put something in your head that you can achieve, that it's about your energy, that you, you just need to sit and focus and uh, believe in exactly what you're doing, mm -hmm. believe in uh, your dream mm -hmm. and start fighting for it. As long as you have the right team with you, I think Sky is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, that is interesting. As long as you have the right team with you, that's just the beginning. Yes. All right, so let's go to your creative process again as a fashion designer. I always love to ask this question uh, to every creative, could be in music, could be in you know, movie creation, or even fashion, because this is a creative kind of industry. How is your process like? For instance, if a client comes to you, perhaps, and they will tell you, I want this and this kind of a design, or I saw this somewhere, and I think I want a replica of the same. What really goes into your head? Do you create this uh, exact what they mentioned, or you just go deep into your creative process as a person? Okay, if a client comes, for example, and said, okay, I saw something, for example, in red carpet or whatever, yeah. and come, we make sure that we give exactly the same because we're a designer and we have different designers from different uh, parts of the world. We have Italians with us, we have from Russia, we have from Asia, Pakistan, Indian. So we have different kind of people and we have amazing thinkers from Africa as well. So what we do is that if you have something that uh, you want to replicate for you, we will do exactly that. But sometimes, you see, we also advise you that instead of us replicating exactly, instead of, let's say, Z, we can turn L. So it becomes your personal. Because when it comes to custom made, you don't just copy people. Mm -hmm. So you do something that is amazing so that others can as well copy you. Mm -hmm. So that is exactly how we strive. But ideally for you, it's a what you see is what you get. We will do that exactly. If exactly what you want, we will give you exactly that. Exactly that. Yeah. Well, then have you had to perhaps deal with those um, difficult kind of customers or clients? I mean, you've really traveled across, I can imagine. So there are perhaps different people, different mindsets. Have you had to deal with those difficult clients? Yes. And how is it like for you? Uh, you see, when it comes to, let me put, when it comes to Western, and, and if they give you something to make, yeah. if you don't make it exactly like that, you're already in problem. And you see sometimes, you see, they have this kind of, uh, my grandmother gave me this fabric, mm -hmm. and I don't want to toy with it. I want you to 
make me what something with this. <laughs> and if you make one mistake, you're already in problem. So that is why we uh, make sure that we have uh, fabulous expatriates, people who understand and can be able to interpret different kind of uh, fabric and print. And apart from even fabric, mm -hmm. you know, in Africa, yes, we can create something that is amazing. We can design something. But sometimes you see that we don't even know how to match fabric. Mm -hmm. You understand? If you see an animal, for example, you need to make sure that you match so at least it can be able to fit in into the system. So this is exactly also what we're teaching our people here mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, they can be able to strive beyond what we think. That's interesting. Yes. So it's not just making a cloth because someone said they wanted a particular cloth, a particular design, but also is, does that bring the whole aspect of color coordination? Yes, color coordination is part of it, but you see sometimes you see fabric uh, almost in a, in, in a way that you don't understand it. You need to interpret as well the fabric to make sure that you match. Mm -hmm. You understand? Let's yeah. assume what you wear now. If I want to make this one, I will make it in a different way so that the beauty of this interpretation will appear in a very fantastic way. In a different way. In a different way. So if someone says, I want exactly like that, you can try and make it in a way... Yes. Perhaps not quite the same, but also to fit the kind of person. Yes. All right. Now, let's talk a bit about how for us as Africans. I mean, for the longest time, we have perhaps this mindset of what comes from the West is good. And we've seen that a lot even here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. We'd prefer to buy the second-hand clothes, which is not bad, depending again on someone. But what does that say about how we embrace, appreciate for our me, own? For me, it is very bad because... Uh, you think it's yes, very bad? Yes, if you have a second-hand cloth, a second-hand cloth, for example, why don't we wear and send it to them as well? Okay. Why That's must it be? Yes. Why must it be that we have to accept anything that is adulterated, anything that is left behind belongs to Africa? Mm. You understand? We need to also understand that it is time for us to be proud of who we are. We can as well wear and send it back to them. Mm -hmm. Let them as well buy that same something. So it means we can make our own, wear and send it to them. Of course, yes. Okay. Of course, if they can make and send to us, <laughs> we can as well make and send back to them. I tell a lot of young, for example, designers who are coming to my place, and I tell them, first, you don't just be a designer. First, what is your aim? How do you think that you want to uh, uh, impart into the society of the world? Because mm -hmm. the only problem we have now, you see, if I'm, if I'm a Kenya, if I'm a Nigeria, I am thinking just in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I don't want to think beyond Nigeria. You understand? Yeah. We see a lot of fashion designers, you know, they, they have this, this mindset of, okay, as long as I can make for, let me give example, for your people, for example. Mm -hmm. So that means they are already there. You don't know that even you can think beyond just Kenya. You think to Tanzania, you think to Nigeria, then you think to the world. Mm -hmm. We can do that. Mm -hmm. But the only thing that we have is this limitation of what will people talk about me? How do they think about me? You don't care how people talk about you. Mm -hmm. So what you just need to do is to create your dream, believe in that dream, and keep pushing. All a right. time will come, you see the right person that can be able to uh, take you to the next level. All right. So then is what I'm getting from you is that this is a poor mentality we are harboring as Africans, especially when it comes to appreciating and embracing our own. Yes. For example, if you come to a place like in Africa, you see, we believe in this. If you are not in this cartel or if you don't belong to this society, <laughs> that means you cannot make it. Or he needs to come to us, so let us just put him in the right place. Yeah. It doesn't work that way anymore. The world has gone beyond that. We're in a digital world now that even from your bedroom, you can reach to the world if you believe in yourself. Mm. So why do I need to join uh, one community for me to excel? Mm -hmm. That mentality needs to die. It we just to need die. to believe in ourselves and encourage ourselves. And uh, apart from even encouraging ourselves, we need to work together. Mm -hmm. Because it's a very big market. Mm -hmm. Only Africa, when it comes to fashion, we have one point something billion in Africa. Mm -hmm. So you, you can be able to imagine the potential if we can unite as, uh, let's say, even 10 fashion designers creating something that same way uh, the Westerners are doing. Mm -hmm. You see, a cameraman will come, uh, 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 a makeup artist will come, a fashion designer will come. They will form a cartel mm -hmm. because you need to help each other, yes? That is the only way you can grow. Mm -hmm. So through your uh, quality, something that you make, a cameraman takes your picture, what he got? 
he has quality picture as well to show his job. Yes, a makeup artist will come make your face. She has also a quality picture to show about her job. Mm. So we need to try to see how we can be able to, you know, join together and push because the more together, the better we become. Yeah, that's beautiful. So again, it also means the other thing that we are lacking is that collaboration coming together yes okay. you see, in Africa we just believe that if me and you now form a company or the next thing I'm thinking how to you know to corner you yeah. or to do something thinking that oh I will be telling you that I know better than you because mm -hmm. I'm the one writing or because I'm the one creating so those mindset need to die need for to example die. look at the Chinese people if they want to open Chinese restaurant for example now you see them like 20 they will donate to one one thousand or two two thousand already they gather forty thousand dollars they set up if start so what do they do you become the manager i become the sales this one become like that before you know they will open another branch from there one person go there they will open another branch from there one person go there and before you know they own hotels chain of hotels mm -hmm. because they were united but in africa we don't think about that at all what we always put in our mind is that it's my company. <laughs> I am the owner of this business. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? Yes. I have different challenges even here when I came. You see, you train people. They think they become better. Before you know, oh, I want to go open my business. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, good luck. I they wish you the best. Really you don't even it. know the system yet. Less than six months, one year, they are living. And at the end of the day, you find out that this thing is something that you need to you know put in your time and have a better understanding of exactly what you're doing wow i mean this is some powerful nuggets i mean especially for even those that are watching and want to get into the fashion business and a fashion world this is a place to be to try and understand the basics I and mean, then you need practice. to you need to because in africa you see we even in nigeria it happens you see we can create something very interesting but the finishing is always a problem mm -hmm. attention to details is always the problem. We don't pay attention to no, that. No, because you can only give what you have. Okay. You can only give what you have. If in school or whatever you learn how to cut in one-sided, you cannot become a magician. Mm -hmm. You understand? So we need to you know, pay more attention, travel out there, have better experience, come back, you can teach. Because at the end of the day, I'm telling you, in Africa, we can create something that is amazing. Mm -hmm. But what about the finishing? What about the quality of exactly how can you show to the world that, okay, you can be proud and say, yes, this is made in Africa. Mm -hmm. Most African you see today, yes, they design what they do. They take this, their design goes to, uh, for example, Asia, anywhere, make the same dress and come back and tell you I'm a brand. For me, you are still not a brand until you start practicing that in, in your local domain mm -hmm. and making sure that other companies out there accept your product. Because, you see, if you're always a champion in your house, you need to go out there and see if you're a champion out there. That is when you see now competition comes. Yeah. That is when you see now other international companies will come to our own place and compete with us as well. Mm -hmm. Because you see now, how many f runway we have in Africa? Even if you see one of the best runways, Mercedes runway, is not owned by Africa. Yeah. We, we aspire to see ourselves in uh, New York Fashion Week, to see ourselves and in we the Paris Fashion own, Week. Yeah. How can you have your own if you are not united? Yeah. It's very important to just be in unity. Without that, there is no way we can move. Okay. There is no way we can move in Africa, really. Right. Dennis, again, there's that other aspect. Because in as much as we really want to grow our own, in as much as we may want to appreciate and embrace our own, especially now when you come down to a place like Kenya, there's always, again, that issue of, like you mentioned, the second-hand clothes. Yes, and you say that, I mean, in as much as we can get from them, we can also make our very own original, and they can equally do the same. But then... From your perspective as a designer, what do you think needs to be done? Because when it comes down to Kenya, the whole aspect of manufacturing is so limited just because of that. But then again, if we ban that, what happens to the business person who f are focused on, that, on those kinds of designs? Yeah, this business person needs to now come unite with the local vendors here. Because at the end of the day, if you're buying uh, fairly used clothes for a thousand, yeah, yeah? 
and uh, now I am happy that you see you start growing already cotton here. So now it is time for government as well to support us, uh, the, the fashion industry so they can be able to at least produce fabric for them because also fabric is challenging Kenya. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you something. Sure. If, you, if you go to uh, looking for something that uh, you want or somebody has a picture that he or she wants you to replicate, also fabric sometimes. You don't get the kind of quality uh, fabric that you're looking for. Mm. Yes, we have in some places, but you see, he needs to be like in different places so that when you come, you see fashion designers all over the world, but they just go to the neighboring place, they pick fabric here, they pick this one here, they pick that one, and before you know, they create something. It's in plant. Yes, it's in plant. You know, but in here in Africa, sometimes you see, even when you have something in your mind, you need to wait till uh, you now start looking for this fabric. And how many people know how to search quality fabric? How many people know where to buy quality fabric? Because the mindset is okay, you just go to Turkey or you go to Dubai or you buy from China. Mm -hmm. But also, if you have different companies that produce different fabrics here, mm -hmm. it will help also the people who are here to excel very fast. Because if I'm waiting for a product to come from China, a fairly used product, sometimes it takes me one month. Yeah. And you have somebody who can produce that in three days for you. Mm -hmm. Which one is better? Clearly, that makes a lot of sense. So as in as much as you may want to want to embrace our own, there's also the place of the government. Yes. In, in, in that capacity. In, without government in this planet, there is nothing that can be done well. Uh -huh. You understand? Because they are the leader, they are the head. Uh -huh. You understand? So they need to provide that enabling environment so that people who come as well can I sell. Uh -huh. I see a lot of very great designers here in Kenya. A lot. But sometimes you see, even when you're looking for the kind of pin that, that you want to use, you don't find it. Just pin, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. You understand that you want to use, you don't find it. So we have this kind of thing that if it's coming from uh, only one place, that is the only way you can find it. We need to have different varieties so that you, whatever you're looking for, it is very easy for you to assess. And once you can assess that, your mind now will start working. That thing that you have in your head, you will bring it and the world will embrace it. Mm -hmm. Also, you talked a bit about that aspect of competition and I really want to understand from you what exactly you do to just keep yourself affluent. I mean, there's various people to compete with, especially being a brand, you know, someone as you. So what exactly do you do? Uh, for me, I just believe that I do not have competition. You don't? Yes. Well, in the sense that I believe in what I'm doing and I believe in my brand that even if I don't sell it, let's say in Nigeria, I will sell it in US. Yeah. If I don't sell it in US, I will sell it in Australia. Yeah. Because I already have my own strategies. We're in digital world, yeah? Mm -hmm. Where, you know, the world has gone even beyond your cotton. You see, today now people are taking uh, just a photo of their self in a mirror and you have yourself wearing the same dress. So yeah. people have gone beyond even what we're thinking here in Africa. You understand? In Africa, we're still thinking about, oh, if I can cut my fabric, I'm already a fashion designer. <laughs> the world has gone beyond that. Mm -hmm. So for me, we created uh, a digital platform online that uh, we are now even having a representative all over the world, even from our system here in Kenya. Mm. And if we have others, what you do, you just produce in the next three, four, five days, you send. Mm. I'm not looking at, okay, just okay, let me sit down because there is COVID-19 yes. and uh, I will just like fold my hand. No, as long as every challenge comes, very great solution. Mm. If challenges not come, your brain cannot be able to work for you to see something and uh, dream of something bigger. All right. And we'll come back to that aspect of COVID-19 in just a short while. But then again, I'd also just want you to go and like expound further again, perhaps well, for those upcoming fashion designers who may really want to know, because you spoke ab about the strategies and you talked about the online platform, which is a great space. But aside from the digital space, which other strategies can one employ being in this kind of industry? Uh, the era that we are today is a digital area. You understand? Because if you... And it helps you even as a fashion designer or upcoming fashion designer to excel the more. Mm. Because you see, in those days when you produce first, I need to look for John to wear my dress first to show. But you can even wear your dress and show to the world, this is what I made from your bedroom. Mm. And the world will embrace it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Now, if you're looking at community, you know, sometimes community also, you know, 
kill your mindset. Yeah. Oh, it's not beautiful. Oh, it's not good. Oh, this one's supposed to be like that. Nobody should tell you it is your vision. It is your dream. So create that thing that you feel inside you that uh, the world will embrace it. And uh, have one, two, three people. I think you're good to go. I think you're good to go. You've said something very important, just aside from that digital space. I mean, and that's why it was important for me to just try and understand for me which other strategies can one employ. That aspect of vision, is it one of those things that is really always lacking? Because you would hear someone say, I mean, I've been doing fashion for like five years. I can't quite see progress. Yeah, those who do. I've been creating, mm. I've been selling, mm. but I just don't see anything. We just need to support each other mm. in Africa. Mm -hmm. In a sense that if I have an idea of how you will sell, you see sometimes there is um, uh, a guy that came to my place and I saw the bangle he wears. Mm. And I asked him, where did you make this? And he said he made it from Kenya here. And I love this job. But this person who made this, and nobody knows him or her. You understand? Yes. So, what I did was uh, calling my team. Now we are looking for this guy to see how we can be able to bring him into our own system because I don't do bango. Mm -hmm. So that means if you create this bango, what will I do? I will help him to sell this bango to show the world because I have the platform yes. to show the world. Collaboration. Collaboration. So this is exactly how we can be able to support each other to see us striving. Mm -hmm. That is in my own opinion. Now that brings that whole idea, the way you're saying it's important to come together, to unite, put minds together, see what we can create even as Africans. Because that's the only way you can, you, you, you imagine that when you want to pee, you're peeing here, peeing here, you don't see foam, yeah? But when you pee in one place, you see that the foams rise up. Yeah. So that is what I believe that uh, will make us, you know, to, because we're left behind, in my opinion. Africa is some... Uh, it's, a, it's a continent that has a great potential. Africa is a continent that I believe is the next world. Mm -hmm. You understand? And uh, without unity, without coming together, it will be a very difficult uh, journey. Okay. Well, yes, we will get there, but the journey is not going to be easy. Okay. Yeah. Now, also, I'd love to pick your mind in terms of how you'd compare these two markets. This is the uh, market in Nigeria. And I'd love to pick Nigeria because, I mean, there's always, again, that mindset of at least Nigeria love and embrace fashion. They say that uh, you will never miss to know a Nigerian when you see one, even if they don't talk. <laughs> Just in terms of how they are dressed, how they've really embraced fashion. So how would you compare the market in Nigeria and Kenya when it comes to fashion as a whole? You know, the dressing, the wearing and all of that. The difference between Nigerians and Kenyan is, for me, in my opinion, yeah. Nigerians are ready to take any risk. Uh -huh. Kenyans you understand us. now? Kenyans, some of them, yes, they are doing very well. Yeah. Some Kenyans are doing amazing. Amazing, I'm telling you. But the fact is that we just need to do more. You understand? We just need to do more. If you see a Nigerian that dress as you like, create the same thing for Kenyans. Uh -huh. Do you understand? Yeah. Create the same thing for Kenyans. We have... Uh, uh, some group of guys that came, now they want to create something for the Indians living in Kenya with Chiffon, mm -hmm. Sikh Miss with Ketenge. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And also you have Ketenge, which is your, your is it your main uh, fabrics here? Yeah. yeah? The Maasai. The Maasai, the whatever. The Kikuyu. The Kikuyus. So if you can be able to, you know, turn this thing into something very unique and form something for Kenyans mm -hmm. and everybody will embrace it. Mm -hmm. You just need to believe in that your story and uh, you bring it to the world at least your president today now is talking about that you need to wear made in africa and he's, he's and doing African, so well and, and, and he's pushing into this thing so that yeah. is, means there's a very big opportunity for uh, fashion designers here in kenya mm. to strive and uh, even read the world i want to wear also uh, kenyan ketenge yeah. uh, the world wants to wear the same thing yeah, yeah. so it just push and believe that is it and it's a question of taking risks not being afraid what will people say what will people think yeah because you just need to start doing something you know you don't care about what people think about you Okay. You understand? You don't need even to think if there is anybody existing in your side. You yeah. just need to believe in yourself and keep pushing that. And uh, I believe that there is a very big potential. Kenya has a very big name and uh, a very big space in Africa. Mm. So that means whatever you do from here, if really you believe in yourself, we're sell. Mm. You understand? Yes.
well put well put now let's talk a bit about COVID-19 when I mean in the inception of this uh, kind of disease like I mentioned earlier we definitely know different industries were affected key among them hotel tourism entertainment but also fashion space was really affected because also the way you mentioned in terms of sometimes shipping fabric from various areas so for you as a designer how did this take a toll on you and how have you dealt with it so far by the way I came to Kenya during COVID oh wow yes so I <laughs> I was among those that were uh, affected because when we came in uh, the next month, when yeah. we came in the next month was when uh, the COVID uh, system uh, break out in Kenya and we were stopped because then we came in with different expatriates. So like after two, three months, they has to go back to where they come from. And but you see, and before that time, we have already done employment, you know, and most of them are single women you know who are having their case that uh, you know you can't just tell them to go home already they have believed that oh there's a place that you know they can you know sustain themselves yeah. so it was a very big challenge for us as a company by you know you are not selling but at the same time you're taking care of a lot of people because then when we came was we we're training mm. you understand so we're training them to see how better they can become and i can tell you today a lot of them are stitching something that you would think is made in Italy. Mm. You understand? But after the COVID, it become so easy for them to say, I want to go open my own business. <laughs> so the I, same thing yes, you I want to go now, <laughs> you know, start my own something. Yeah. But the, the, the challenge of uh, that COVID also made us to, like what I'm telling you in a digital uh, world, made us now to begin to think mm -hmm. beyond just custom made or beyond just making in one uh, country. Yeah. So we decided to build our own uh, digital platform mm -hmm. where we start uh, selling all over the world. Oh, okay. So did you manage to keep all your employees regardless of the situation? I yeah. mean, many, many people really lost jobs during COVID. Yeah, during COVID, those that I employ, all of them were kept. But after COVID, they're leaving. Yeah. And I'm feeling bad about it. And it's <laughs> Yes, I'm feeling bad about oh, okay, it because... Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. because you see, you train and you believe that, you know, what you give, you want to expect back. Uh, you know, I have a little bit, uh, but some of them are still there and we are pushing together. Yeah, that's beautiful yes, to know. Yes, Thank yes. you so much, Dennis, for your time and at least making us understand more about the fashion space and what we even need to do as Africans to improve. My pleasure. All right, and that's pleasure. when we bring the conversation to a close from me and on behalf of the entire team. We say thank you so much for watching. Till tomorrow, good morning. Thank you.